Literally on that note, welcome to worship. Just a couple things uh, for you. Um, communion this evening will be your way of understanding continuous table. So it really doesn't affect you that much. It's that we will break in the center and come around. I've done this three or four times. I think I have it down. So I'll try not to mess it up. Um, the service has started so wonderfully. We want to end it that way too and, and make things uh, well for all of us. Thanks for being here tonight. Remember tomorrow at 10 a.m. we'll have another service. And I pray uh, it'll be a Lessons and Carol service, uh, lots of Christmas carols. And if you like singing those this after Sunday, tomorrow uh, we're, we're heading towards Epiphany. And so this will be a last time to sing those joyous, festive songs. So please now stand with me, Molly. Oh, what do we have next? Oh, you have one more anthem. I said, up to this point, it was a good surface.
It's safe to stand now. A reading from John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Rejoicing in the good news that God and sinners are reconciled in Christ, let us confess our need for forgiveness. God of everlasting love, we confess that we have lived in captivity to the fear of death by our actions and by our neglect. We have fallen short of your good and gracious will. Free us from anxiety and distraction. Cast out our sin and enter in. Give us a new birth of hope as we welcome the child born to save, Christ the Lord. Amen. The angels of God proclaim to us the birth of hope and joy and peace to God's people on earth. For the sake of our Savior, who is Christ the Lord, who lives and and lived and died and rose for us, God forgives us all of our sins and delights to call us His beloved children. Amen. The Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen His glory. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. We have seen Christ's glory, the glory as the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence and in the last day walk in the brightness of his glory through your only Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated.
The first reading is from Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from Titus. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly. While we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, he is who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. In those days, a decree went out from, from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was, a descent, he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a host of the heavenly, a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen 
as it had been told them, the gospel of the Lord. Praise you may be seated. This is a story that has been told and retold for 2,000 years. We all know where it begins and where it ends. It is a story of birth and death, of hope and despair, of great doubt, and of even greater faith. It is the story of the arrival of a new world, a new time wedging its way into the midst of the old time, the old world. The story begins in those days. It begins in the old time, chronological time, time shaped by the powers that be. The emperor reigns. Time is denoted by those in power. Quirinius was governor of Syria. This is a kind of time we know something about, the time of census taking and taxes and authoritative orders and pronouncements. Time shaped by business as usual, by the world's accepted power structure. History defined by those in positions of authority. So, the story begins in the old time, the old age, in those days. Even the words sound tired and hopeless. It was in those days that Joseph and Mary made the long 70-mile journey from Nazareth and Galilee to Bethlehem. Joseph walked, I suppose, and Mary rode the donkey. They were on their way to be enrolled as a part of the census. Joseph was a descendant of King David, and so by the decree of Emperor Augustus, Joseph needed to register in Bethlehem, David's hometown. There's very, very really uh, little written about this lonely trip to Bethlehem. I suppose one could imagine what it might have been like for Mary to make such a five or six day journey on the back of a donkey, making their way with other pilgrims to other hometowns. Eventually the road slipped past Jerusalem, heading south past the Herodium, Herod the Great's fortress palace, and on to Bethlehem. One can imagine Mary's increasing discomfort as the time of her baby's birth grew ever closer. And perhaps we can even sense Joseph's feelings of anxiety, having to move Mary so late in her pregnancy, so far away from midwives, family, and familiar surroundings. There were no cell phones, of course, no landlines or internet. And so there was no hotel, hotels.com, orbits, travelocity, or any of the other kind of sites that are out there today where one could make prior arrangements for a place to stay, only to trust in the generosity of others to supply what was needed. So here we have these two people, not bigger than life, flesh and blood, life size, no larger, just two people, just like us. Can you see them? No, not painted with the broad strokes of history. Just a man and a woman filled with trepidation, filled with the fears and doubts just like any other expecting parents might be, wishing they didn't have to make the trip. Now, I don't know if a small village like Bethlehem would have had a, a commercial inn as we think of an inn today. The word used for inn here means really an upper guest room of a house. That's what the word means. It could very well be that Mary and Joseph found lodging with a relative in Bethlehem along with other relatives who had come and they were all crowded into the upper room or guest room of the house. Luke recounts, and while they were there, the time came for her delivery. You see, it wasn't the night that they arrived into, or the day they arrived into Bethlehem that the baby was born. They had been there for a while, some time. We don't know how long they were there. But while they were there, her time came for her to deliver. And so when Mary's time came for her to give birth, I think the other Jewish women who were there probably brought her downstairs to the first floor where everyday activities took place and where at night the animals were kept in a lower section of the room and there in a less crowded area of the house they made a place for her where she could have a little privacy. And she gave birth to her son, her firstborn. And she wrapped him in swaddling cloths 
and laid him in a manger. There would have been two mangers, one carved in the rock from the lower place, if they had a donkey or larger animal, that sunken place, that manger, and then a, a regular manger out of wood or maybe out of stone, if they had a, a sheep or a goat down below. And they used that heat, you see, to heat the whole house. It was radiant heat from the animals. And they'd clean it out in the morning and they would kick the animals out and they would make breakfast there and lunch and dinner there and bring them back in in the evening. Most peasants' houses in Bethlehem were built that way. This would have been normal for these folks, these peasant people. Now in that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. They were terrified, and who wouldn't be? But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I'm bringing you good news of a great joy for all the people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. The angel said to the shepherds, Do not be afraid, which is repeatedly proclaimed by the angel. Those days, you see, are governed by fear. The political powers in Jesus' day and our own play on our fears to get their way, whether it be a fear of the government, fear of the IRS, fear of global climate change, fear of a virus producing epidemic, the fear of deprivation, the fear of not being able to make a living, the fear of outliving your money before you die in your retirement, or the fear of death itself. But with this day, this day, comes new possibilities. The first words spoken after Jesus' birth are, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. The turning point in the story occurs in the one understated verse. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the upper guest room. Before this verse, the story is in those days. After Jesus' birth, this day has arrived. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds... Now, these shepherds were not just any shepherds tending sheep. They were descendants of David, tending David's flock, sheep destined for the daily temple sacrifices and for Passover in Jerus the Jerusalem temple. Bethlehem's priestly shepherds had to learn and follow special techniques and rituals during lambing season to prevent harm and self-inflicted injury from thrashing about after birth on spindly legs. Newborn lambs would be wrapped in swaddling cloths. Then they were placed in a manger or a feed trough where they could calm down out of harm's way. After careful inspection by the shepherd, any spot or blemish, no matter how small, meant instant rejection. So it was after the angelic visitation that the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. Huh? The text says when they saw this, they recognized this. This is what they did. This is what they did to their precious lambs. Now, the angel said, this is a precious lamb. This is a lamb of God. This is one who is to be Lord and Savior, Messiah, Mashiach. Is that right? I think so. I think that means Messiah in Hebrew. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words, treasured them up in her heart, and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Long before Jesus' birth, the prophet Isaiah wrote <clears throat> concerning the child in chapter 9, 6, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. 
mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Isaiah also prophesied later on in chapter 53 about Jesus. Surely He has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Upon Him was a chastisement that made us whole. And with His stripes, we are healed. Jesus, the spotless spotless Lamb of God, would in the fullness of time be wounded for our transgressions, our sins against the Father. He would be bruised for our iniquities. He would bleed internally for our impure and sinful thoughts. Both deeds and thoughts capsulated here. He would bear them both, bleeding externally and bleeding internally, giving His life as a ransom for many, so that all who call upon His name shall be saved. Amen. our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to in the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Joining our voices with all in heaven and on earth, praising the word made flesh in Jesus, Let us pray for the world to which Christ comes, the church whom Christ calls, and to all people in need whom Christ loves. Lord Jesus Christ, we come to your cradle with joy and wonder. We adore you for your loving kindness. We thank you for making yourself small and meek, that we might approach you gladly and without fear. Thank you, dear Jesus. Accept our hearts as our best and loving gift. Lord, in your mercy. Make the church your holy manger. Bless it with your dear presence, your great goodness, and your holy love. 
Like herald angels, let it always announce your mercy and favor to any who will receive you into their hearts and lives. Lord, in your mercy. Make this congregation into a welcoming Bethlehem home. Give us joyful souls eager to adore and proclaim your precious name. Give us generous hearts so that we see and welcome you in the unexpected people touching our lives. Give us tireless hands and feet so we may hurry to share your great love with those who need it most. Lord, in your mercy. O Prince of Peace, protect and bless your persecuted servants, especially during this season of light. Turn their suffering for the sake of your name into great joy. Transform their tormentors into confessors of your undeserved mercy. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, bless all the dear children who most need your tender care. Kindle faith in their hearts and keep them safe from every danger. Give childlike faith to everyone who doubts your existence or despairs of your forgiveness. And give them peace. Lord, in your mercy. Angels sang of peace and goodwill at your birth. In this sinful world, violence troubles your people even on this holy night. Let your holy angels protect and direct those in the military, all first responders, and anyone whose work is difficult and dangerous this night and always. Bring justice and peace to places of discord and chaos, and bestow your peace upon us all. Lord, in your mercy. O Son of Righteousness, arise with healing in your wings. Shine the light of your salvation on all who sit in the darkness of suffering and the shadow of death. Restore them to life and hope. Encourage all who care for them. Let the good news of your birth among us adorn their suffering with unconquerable joy. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, you have come to save us from evil, from our sins, and from death. Wipe away the tears of those who grieve, runs deep. Stay near us, Lord Jesus, we pray. Love us and guide us through our lives. Bless us to be a blessing to others. Bring all your dear children to heaven to live with you forever in the holy light of your love, which you have shared eternally with your Father and the Holy Spirit. For with them you are one God, now and unto the ages of ages. Lord, in your mercy. Come down to us, O God, and make your home with us, in us and through us, for the sake of the one whose birth and the angels sang and the shepherds proclaimed, Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share a sign of peace with one another.
Please stand with me. Lift your hearts to God in praise. May the Lord be with you too. To the Lord our hearts we raise. Gloria in excelsis Deo. of God made flesh, great and wondrous mystery. Now we see with vision fresh God's abundant majesty. Gloria in excelsis Deo. church on earth and the house of heaven above. Let us praise his name whose birth brings to us eternal love. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Holy God, creator of all and source of life, at the birth of time, your word brought light into the world. In the fullness of time, you sent your word, born of Mary, to shine in our darkness and to make us your daughters and sons. In the night in which our Lord Jesus Christ was betrayed, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and after he'd given thanks, he gave it for all of them to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Amen. Congregation may be seated.
stand with me? The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in His grace. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, You gave Your Son both as a sacrifice for sin and a model of the godly life. Enable us to receive Him always with thanksgiving and to conform our lives to His through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
May you be filled with the wonder of Mary, the obedience of Joseph, the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, and the peace of the Christ child. May Almighty God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Joy to the world, the Lord is. Go with hope, peace, joy, and love of the birth of Jesus, our Savior. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. To God.